Welcome to your latest Covidence UK study update. My name is Adrian Martineau. I'm the chief investigator of the study based at Queen Mary University of London. So we've had a busy month here at Covidence UK. Uh, we've now reached a total of 19,300 people who've signed up to the study. We've posted out around 4,000 antibody tests, checking for people's antibody levels following completion of the vaccination course against Covid-19. We've also welcomed 50 participants to Barts and the London Medical School here in Whitechapel in London for a venous blood sampling to check their T cell function following vaccination. That's part of a larger sub-study of 200 participants. We've done around 2000 postal vitamin D tests and we have today reached the point where the final follow-up of the Coronavit trial takes place. Uh, thank you to all 6,200 of you who contributed to this study. Uh, we're now entering the data analysis phase and hope to have results for you soon. I'll just highlight that those of you who have been taking part in the Coronavit trial, I'd encourage you please to continue to complete your monthly questionnaires because this will actually give us important data on any long-term effects of the vitamin D supplements that you've been taking over the last six months. So uh, in the background, we've been crunching the data that you've shared with us. And today I just want to update you on results of one of the analyses we've been doing, which focuses on the incidence and risk factors for symptoms following first dose of COVID-19 vaccination. So to give you a sense of how we are crunching the data, uh, we divided the information that you've given us about post-vaccination symptoms into two groups. First of all, we've identified people who had systemic or whole body symptoms, and these we defined as being either fatigue, feeling tired, headache, having a fever or high temperature, and experiencing muscle aches. We also identified a separate set of localised symptoms, which include tenderness of the arm, soreness, swelling, redness, or painful heavy feeling at the injection site, or swelling of the glands in the armpits or neck. We then the information about these two sets of symptoms into a statistical analysis, along with the information around risk factors that you've shared with us from the baseline questionnaire and from monthly questionnaires moving forward. And that then allows us to identify and answer the question, what are the risk factors for getting systemic and localised symptoms after the first dose of COVID-19 vaccination? Before I share the results of that analysis, I just want to give you a sense of uh, who took part in this study. We have data on 8,761 participants to date who've had their first COVID-19 yeah. vaccination. The average age of people contributing data to this analysis was around 63 years, with people ranging from 17 to 90 years of age. Yeah. Around 30% of participants in this analysis were male, compared with around 70% being female. Uh, the majority were of white ethnic origin, but people of Asian, black and other ethnic origins were also represented. And in terms of the type of vaccine, 63% of people received AstraZeneca, 35.8% received Pfizer, and 1.2% received another type of vaccine. So how common were symptoms following the first dose of COVID-19 vaccination in covid UK participants? Well, 52.4% of people experienced at least one systemic or whole body symptom after the first jab, and a similar proportion, 53.1%, experienced at least one localised symptom after their first jab. This compares or contrasts, I should say, with data from the uh, Zoe app study, which I know that many of you are also taking part in. Uh, in that study, around 20 percent of people were found to experience systemic symptoms compared with 50 percent of COVID-19 UK. Uh, and 65 percent of Zoe participants had localised symptoms compared with 53 percent of those in COVID-19 UK. And these differences most likely represent differences in terms of the uh, sociodemographic composition of the COVID-19 UK cohort compared with the Zoe cohort. So what were the risk factors for systemic symptoms in our analysis? Well, first of all, the type of jab that you have makes a big difference. If you have an AstraZeneca jab, there was a 64.7% chance of getting systemic symptoms afterwards. Whereas if you had a Pfizer jab, just a 32.6% chance. So AstraZeneca vaccination is associated with significantly increased risk of having systemic symptoms compared with Pfizer. Having had previous COVID-19 was also a risk factor for getting systemic symptoms with 70.6% 70 of those who'd had COVID-19 reporting symptoms compared with 52% of those who hadn't. Um, women uh, reported symptoms more often than men, 57% versus 43%. 
uh, as did those with poor general health compared with those with excellent general health, 67 versus 48 percent respectively. Interestingly, uh, we found that having a diagnosis of hay fever or eczema was also associated with an increased risk of having systemic symptoms, 57% versus 51% among those who didn't have either of those conditions. So what about risk factors for localised symptoms, these symptoms in the arm or uh, around the area of the injection site? Again, the type of vaccine you have makes a difference, but this time the Pfizer vaccine is associated with an increased risk of localised symptoms compared with AstraZeneca, with 59% of those having a Pfizer reporting uh, localised symptoms compared with 51% of those who had AstraZeneca. All the other risk factors for localised symptoms were similar to those for systemic symptoms. So having an increased chance of localised symptoms post-vaccination associated with having had COVID-19 in the past, uh, it was higher among women than men, higher among those with poorer health than uh, better health, and higher among those with hay fever or eczema compared to those without. So what are the take home messages here? Well, first of all, I should say that post vaccination symptoms are common among COVID in UK participants. We've shown that just over 50% of people get at least one systemic or whole body symptom after their first jab, and a similar proportion, 53.1%, get at least one localised symptom after their first jab. We've also shown that having systemic or whole body post-vaccination symptoms is significantly more common for those who had AstraZeneca versus the Pfizer vaccine. By contrast, localised symptoms in the injection site were more common for those who had Pfizer as compared with AstraZeneca. We also found that for both systemic and localised symptoms, these were more common in people who'd had previous COVID-19, in women compared with men, in people with poorer versus better general health, uh, and in those who report having a hay fever or eczema. So what are the next steps? Well, first of all, we want to ask the question, do post-vaccination symptoms associate with better antibody response? And as we send out uh, dry blood spot tests to you in the post, once you've had your second jab, we'll then take them back, analyse them, and then see whether the people who report the symptoms following vaccination are those who end up with a better antibody response post-vaccination. We're also very interested in the potential group of people who tend not to have antibodies to coronavirus, even though they've been vaccinated. And we want to know how common that is among uh, COVID UK participants. We also want to understand what the risk factors are for this, because if we can understand that, then we might be able to identify groups who are who need a booster sooner than others. And we also want to follow people up over the long term to assess, well, does it even matter what your antibody level is? after vaccination. In other words, is it a good biomarker of your risk of COVID-19 moving forward? We know that antibodies are only part of the picture. We know that T-cell immunity, for example, is important as well. But uh, these are the questions really that uh, COVID-19 UK has been set up to answer and it illustrates the real importance and the value of your data uh, moving forward. If you can continue to contribute to our, our monthly questionnaires to let us know about any respiratory illnesses you have, uh, any vaccinations you have and symptoms that you have after those vaccinations, that would be incredibly valuable. Uh, so I'd just like to uh, finish off now by saying a big thank you to everyone for all the data that you've contributed. Rest assured, we're working hard to analyse it and generate important findings that will help us to manage COVID-19 moving forward. Until next month, goodbye. <laughs>